Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Welcome to the beautiful city of Bilbao. Aratzal Deon Gusteoi. Bonjour, dear Yves, and as they say in Germany, Herzlichen Willkommen. Um, on behalf of all of us here at the agency, we're really delighted to welcome so many familiar faces to Bilbao. And also, I think we have plenty of new ones around the place as well. I'd like to say a particular welcome uh, to our online audience. We are web streaming this event, so we are going global like everybody else is. So a uh, particular welcome to, to those of you who are watching us on the internet. For your convenience, today we have uh, interpretation, uh, not into all languages, but hopefully we'll manage. English is channel one, Castellano channel two, Francais channel three, and Deutsch channel four. So um, I hope you all have your, uh, by now you have your, your um, headphones and that you'll be able to follow in one or other of the languages. It's great. Um, I would ask you also to put your mobile phones on silent, but uh, Sashi putting her mobile phone right now on silent because it just beeped. Uh, there you go, it's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? Um, one of the important things for you uh, to note is I don't want you to switch it off because later on we're going to ask you to connect with us using your mobile phone. Uh, so don't switch it off, just put it on silent for our opening session. And I'll come back to you later and tell you, explain to you how we can connect. Um, about this hall, many of you will have been here already, uh, the very famous Euskalduna Congress Center, prize-winning Congress Center uh, on the river. Uh, very beautiful, but just for you to know, they are not planning any evacuation exercises today. So if you hear a signal or an announcement saying that we need to evacuate, uh, you need to evacuate. So follow the exits at the side and at the back, please. The people uh, who own the building asked me particularly to ask you not to scream. <coughs> so don't scream. Walk slowly but purposefully towards the back, follow the uh, people who will be, the emergency people who will be telling you what to do, go outside the building and we'll all meet up at the assembly point and discuss what just happened. So uh, stay calm. Uh, the other thing is help those who are in need of help. And if you're the last one out, close the door. <laughs> so um, we are here, as you know, to address the very important issue of sustainable working lives. And we hope that you are, will enjoy the program that we have devised for you today. Because we've spent, we've put a lot of time, just a moment, please. We've put a lot of time into our program. Hello, Napo. You weren't supposed to be on the stage, Napo. What, what's the problem? Yes, I was going to tell everybody that our director, Krista Sedlacek, can sadly not be with us today because Krista is having a hip replacement operation in Austria. So, um, Th that's, that's, I guess, what you wanted me to say, so I... Oh, okay, you, you want to send Krista a message, Napo? You want... Oh. 
you want us all to send a message. Okay. Right. Well, that's not a bad idea, I guess. So, let's see, what could the message be? Could this be possibly the message? Get well soon? Yeah? Okay, then I'm going to ask everybody in the audience to look at this camera because we're going to turn the camera onto the public and we're going to count down from three and when we get to the end, I want you all to shout as loudly as you can because remember, she's in Austria, right? <laughs> yeah, so it might take a bit of an effort. So, three, two, one. That was absolutely terrible. <laughs> I think we can do better, Napo. Come on. Right. Okay, this time you're going to shout really louder and you're going to wave, okay? So look at the camera over here. I, I, no laughing now, I, I really think this is a serious issue. Okay, three, two, one. Yes, thank you very much, that's perfect. Okay, Napo, we did it. Thank you very much. I know you're watching from your hospital bed and just want to say to you from all of the staff here in the agency and from all of your guests that we are thinking about you today. Uh, we hope you're not in too much pain. We hope you make a speedy recovery. And uh, as somebody said to me today, we look forward to welcoming back in January to the agency a new bionic director. So, as Eleanor Roosevelt once said, and this is worth thinking about, today, this day, is the oldest you have ever been, and it's the youngest you'll ever be again. Think about it. So, it's a special day. And I'd like to ask you to make the most of our two days together, here in the lovely Basque country to um, where we're, I suppose, really dealing with a very serious topic, but we will try to make it as interesting and as inspirational for you as possible. And because Krista isn't here um, with us and cannot be with us, we are immensely grateful that the chair of our governing board, Karoli Georgi, has agreed to do the welcome on her behalf today. Now, Karoli is the International Secretary of the Hungarian Trade Union Confederation. And um, I asked him earlier on today, you know, not just talking about workplace aging, but but aging in our own personal lives, what's the best thing and what's the worst thing? And Caroli said, the worst thing are the increasing pains and aches that you get all over your body. But I thought his best thing was very sweet indeed. And he said, the older you get, the more friends you collect and the more colleagues you enjoy. So, thank you, Caroli. Please come up and uh, give us your um, opening words on behalf of our director, Krista. Caroli. Thank you, Brenda. There friends and I would call colleagues in the OSH society. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen and colleagues. I'm delighted to welcome you all to the Health Workplaces Summit. It gives me a great pleasure to see so many of you 
here today to bring our latest campaign to a fitting close. Aging, as Brenda already thought, is a very sensible and very wise uh, development <coughs> for societies, and every one of us is aware of the demographic changes that are taking place in Europe. The consequences of these changes for enterprises and in the European workplaces are very complex, but often not so nearly visible. We believe that the Healthy Workplaces for All Ages campaign has contributed significantly to creating greater awareness of this important aspect of population aging. Moreover, it has also demonstrated how enterprises and social partners working together have been able to implement better practices in this area. This summit promises to be both thought-provoking and inspiring. We will reflect on the campaign and celebrate its many achievements. You will also have the opportunity over the coming two days to exchange good practices and share lessons learned during the past two years and explore any further challenges we really need to address. We are grateful to be joined by some of our valued campaign supporters today, each of whom will make an opening statement shortly. Marian Tyson, Commissioner for Employment, Social Affairs, Skills and Labour Mobility from a distance by a video message. Mr. Janer Holm, Deputy Secretary General on Labour and Employment Policy, representing the EU Estonian Presidency. Senor Pedro Llorente, Deputy Secretary for Employment and Social Security of the Spanish Government. Senora Maria Jesus San Jose, Minister for Employment and Justice, past government, our host country, this time. Christa Wester, Chair of the Health and Safety Group Business Europe, and my colleague Marianne Schapman, Head of the Working Conditions Health and Safety Unit of the European Trade Union Institute. Of course, we are also delighted very much with our partners during this campaign. Their commitment has, unprecedented, has, has been unprecedented. We have 100 official campaign partners, over 30 media partners, all of whom have shown real dedication in spreading the campaign's messages. Thank you to all, and keep on. We are also extremely grateful to the national focal points, who have once again been a corner store of the campaign praxis and are social partners, both at the European and at national level. The Sectoral Social Dialogue Federations, the European Trade Union Institute, the European Trade Union Confederation, and Business Europe. Thank you all for your hard and valuable work. All of us here recognize that safe and healthy work conditions throughout working life are good for workers, good for business and society as a whole. We need to keep in mind the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights from 1948, which says, and quote, everyone has the right to life, to work, to just and favorable working conditions. With older workers making up a large and growing proportion of the workforce, it is becoming ever more important to think about aging at work especially to understand the relationship between work, health, and age. In recent years, many countries have raised retirement ages. However, raising official pension ages does not mean that everyone will actually work up to these higher ages. Although the gap between official and effective retirement ages is gradually shrinking, many workers still leave the labor market well before they reach the official pension age as a result of poor health. And we must act on that. Health is a common reason for people leaving the labor market early, but are there any other factors that influence uh, employment participation? We need to answer questions like, are older people able to work? Are they motivated to do so? Are there sufficient opportunities for them to do so? 
our young workers and all those who enter the labor market aware of what they need to know? And do employers adopt workplaces for healthy working lives? What can we do together for effective prevention to promote sustainable working life from the very first moment? Throughout the campaign, we try to answer these questions and to offer guidance for enabling and motivating people to stay at work until retirement age before retiring in good health. Of course, figures for life expectancy and health life, healthy life years expectancy have implications for what is possible in terms of extending working life. The important issue of health inequalities in the context of an aging workforce will be addressed this afternoon in a keynote speech by Professor Maria Alden. With such complex and wide-ranging issues at play, cross-policy cooperation is needed at all levels in order to ensure that Europe's workforce can age healthily. Later today, our panel will discuss successful policies and strategies on aging and work. Needless to say, this campaign was inspired by EU Russia's project Safer and Healthier Work at Any Age, undertaken at the request of the European Parliament. This work highlighted the challenges facing the aging European workforce as well as the existing policies and initiatives aimed at addressing these issues in Europe. If you haven't done so already, I advise check out the interactive data virtualization tool that allows users to quickly and easily access the findings of the project online. Now, at this moment, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, all that remains for me is to wish you an enjoyable and insightful meeting, whereby I'm sure that the program of events we have planned for today and tomorrow will inform and inspire. Enjoy the summit. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tarodia. Thank you also for stepping into Kristen's shoes and giving us so much support uh, in her absence as chair of our governing board. So now we have a very special message. We had hoped today to have Commissioner Mariana Tyson here with us in Bilbao, but unfortunately uh, the date was not possible for her. However, she did take the time uh, to send us a message. Um, let's hear what she has to say. Ladies and gentlemen, dear campaign partners, dear participants, let me first thank you, representatives of governments, employers and trade unions. I thank you for your joint efforts to bring European and national agendas forward on health and safety at work. Your willingness to work together is crucial for progress in the fight against occupational cancer, in combating stress and other problems at workplace. I'm very pleased with the focus on today's event, healthy workplaces for all ages. A healthy workplace improves the individual well-being but also the competitiveness of our economy. We are confronted with an aging workforce, a growing skills gap, and ever-increasing pressure at work. A healthy, safe and well-adapted work environment is more important than ever. Earlier this year, the Commission adopted the communication Safer and Healthier Work for All. We are taking other important steps, such as a revision of values set out in the Carcinogens Directive. A first Commission proposal was adopted by the EU legislator. We have carried out the first peer review last month of good practices on health and safety. And our efforts are ongoing on Simplify Health and Safety Rules. Your next campaign, Healthy Workplaces Manage Dangerous Substances, is a very timely one. And I look forward to launching it with you next spring. The 
Commission is also taking steps to promote workers' health and well-being beyond the workplace. For example, we submitted to the work-life balance proposal, aimed at encouraging a fair sharing of caring responsibilities between men and women. A safe and healthy workplace is one of the cornerstones of our European Pillar of Social Rights. This is a framework of 20 rights and principles on equal opportunities, fair working conditions and social protection. The pillar is a compass for building a fair and dynamic economy and encouraging upward convergence. Last week, European leaders proclaimed their support for the pillar of social rights. This commitment, at the highest political level, puts a healthy and safe Europe at the top of the agenda. Upward convergence will not happen without sharing information, knowledge and best practices. That is why this campaign and the summit today and tomorrow are so important. I want to thank the Bilbao Agency and all active campaign partners for your hard and good work and I wish you a very successful summit. Thank you, thank you. Um, so now we're very honored that we have the, um, the, the, the that we're organizing this conference together with the EU Presidency from Estonia. And now I'd like to invite up here Mr. Jana Holm, Deputy, Deputy Secretary General of Labour and Employment Policy from the Ministry of Social Affairs. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I am really glad to be here in this uh, beautiful city and what's most important, very warm city. When I entered the plane today in my hometown in Tallinn, it was uh, almost 20 degrees colder than here. So believe me, it's better here than, than, than at home, as hard as it uh, is to say. And thank you for the opportunity to say a few words on behalf of, uh, of the presidency. There is no doubt that uh, maintaining workers' health uh, in the workplace is a crucial task uh, for employers as well as policy makers. Workers leaving from employment due to the health problems caused by work is a major issue we need to address. In order to ensure a healthy and long working life, there is need to guarantee that working conditions are suitable for workers, needs and do not cause harm to workers' health. To protect workers and reduce the health problems caused by work, effective measures need to be taken in the workplace. Key issue in this regard is the awareness of employers as well as workers about how effective occupational health and safety measures can benefit in creating healthy workplaces for all and maintaining workers' health and employability. Employers, at least in Estonia, often do not realize that effective occupational health and safety management is beneficial also for businesses as it increases productivity and reduces the costs of occupational accidents and illnesses. I believe that the campaigns carried out by the European Agency for Safety and Health at Work and by the all member countries are an effective tool to bring occupational health and safety issues to the wider public and to raise awareness about the importance of occupational health and safety at the international as well as national level but also at the enterprise level. The campaign Healthy Workplaces for All Ages shed light on the important issues related to occupational health and safety, such as aging workforce, promoting sustainable work and healthy aging from the start of the working life, and preventing health problems throughout the working life. For example, in Estonia, the more specific focus of the campaign in 2016 was on the health checks and how to sustain workers' workability. This year, the campaign is still going on, of course, and during this year's campaign activities, we focused more on the topics of how to retain the workability, gender and age characteristics and ergonomics. The main campaign activities included <coughs> seminars, sharing of best practices, screenings, field screenings and 
evident uh, day to day. As the formation and fixation of values and attitudes uh, begins in childhood, I have glad to say that uh, the NAPA safety lessons in the kindergartens all over Estonia were very successful. Our labor inspectorate developed a special and very popular NAPA show, which is around 20 minutes during that inspectorate communication specialist speaks about health and safety and suitable content for children. Together with the specialist is also NAPA, who at the same time makes the lesson more attractive. The aim of the activity is to put the children to think about the emergence of potentially dangerous situations in the kindergarten at home and in the street scene. In addition, children can solve emergency situations such as how to avoid falling to the ground because of obstacles and etc. All in all, I am happy to say that the campaign in Estonia has been a success and got a lot of attention. I hope it was similar in other member countries. All the campaign events had very practical issues and agenda. That is the reason why EU OSHA seminars in Estonia are popular. People get practical advice from experienced professionals. One important uh, contributing factor is, is definitely also the cooperation with the social partners. Now, looking in the future, an issue which we should consider in the coming years is the ever-changing world of work and its impact on the occupational health and safety. We see that the nature of employment is constantly changing and becoming more flexible and digital. There are various forms of employment that are emerging, for example, platform work and ICT-based mobile work. And this changing world of work challenges, among others, uh, occupational health and safety policies. The major problem is how to ensure the worker's health is safeguarded and secure regardless of the form of employment and at the same time the flexibility is maintained. I think that in order to fully comprehend the possibilities as well as risks related to the new ways of working, we need to bring the topic to the wider public. Finding new and innovative ways to manage the working environment hazards in changing world, work environments is a challenge for employers as well as policy makers. Therefore, I think that we should consider putting more emphasis on the occupational health and safety aspects of the future of work also in the upcoming uh, campaigns. To conclude, I would like to thank the European Agency for Safety and Health at Work for their excellent work in addressing all the relevant aspects of the occupational health and safety and bringing it to the wider public. Thank you and I wish you or fruitful discussions today and tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much from the Estonian Presidency. We're very pleased um, all the way from Madrid to have our next guest here. We were chatting uh, just before we came down here and I was asking Mr. Pedro Lorente, who is the Deputy Secretary of Employment and Social Security of the Spanish Government. I was asking him what are the best and worst things about ageing. And he said definitely the best thing is experience, and this would appear to be a recurring theme. However, he said uh, one of the worst things is maybe noticing some physical decline. Which physical decline, I asked him. And he said that maybe he's not as fast at climbing mountains as he used to be. So, my feeling here is that maybe we can offer him some help with that, or I know what I would do, I would pick mountains that are slightly lower. But anyway, we're really happy to welcome Mr. Pedro Narente. Good afternoon, everybody, and I want to thank the European Agency again for having invited the Spanish government and for inviting the 
um, Ministry of Employment and Social Security, and uh, many thanks to all of you people that have uh, already spoken and will speak after me. And I would like to greet the Regional Minister for Labour of the Basque Government and also my greetings for the representative of the Estonian Presidency of the EU and um, greetings to the representatives of the social interlocutors. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Mrs. O'Brien because she asked me these two questions at the very beginning of the session about what is the best and the worst of um, aging. And what I said that, yes, experience is definitely a significant value for um, those of us that are lucky to age and to enjoy good health. But there are mountains that are not only physical, there are mountains that are the most difficult to climb and uh, which uh, represents uh, a continuous challenge for people on a daily basis, uh, that meaning that you have to overcome um, difficulties in a very complex world, in a world in which there are not always uh, conditions of equality between all citizens. So I'm saying that it's wonderful to be here this afternoon, and it was two years ago when I had the opportunity of uh, witnessing one of the campaigns. Uh, I think it was the campaign of the year 2015, and at that point in time, I think that well, what we did was share experiences between all of the stakeholders involved in this field, that is uh, governments, uh, whether it be within the sphere of the European Union or lo global or local governments or social interlocutors, because I think that whatever has to do with occupational health and well-being is something that um, involves all of us. And I would also like to um, say hello on behalf of the Minister, Madame Fatima Wanyes. She couldn't come here today because I'm afraid that she had to go to Parliament because she had a double session. She had to go to Congress and then to the Senate after that, but she would have loved to have been here today. That was her wish. So, Osham we know that it's based here in Bilbao, which is a magnificent location, and you can see that whenever we travel to this beautiful uh, region. But this does not only mean that it has involved all the European institutions and governments and social interlocutors, but it's also a wonderful opportunity when we get together to reaffirm a joint commitment that is based on uh, producing healthy workplaces which is something that the agency has been doing for many years. And it's not only about uh, putting across a message throughout the European Union, but I think that this also serves to reinforce the culture of prevention and the culture of uh, occupational safety. So I would like to congratulate the agency and, uh, because you have been very clear in your language. You've been very positive in all of your campaigns on healthy workplaces. So this is an awareness raising task and it also has to do with uh, providing information. And this, these are the keys to the success of the agency and which thanks to the support of the European Network of uh, Occupational Safety and Health has created a significant reference as regards uh, occupational safety and health. And this European campaign 2016-17 has, has been very relevant and very interesting because of its global approach as regards achieving the objective of uh, achieving uh, sustainability or a sustainable uh, working environment, which is very important, as well as uh, healthy aging. Because European societies and the Spanish society in particular, and this is something that we have no doubt about, but you know that the demographic trends show that we have a very significant aging problem in the case of the workforce. So, for instance, if we were to look at the OCD report on health indicators, Spain is the second country of the world with the highest level of life expectancy at the moment of birth, 83 years only after Japan. So the challenge that our society has to deal with nowadays is that it's not only about adding more years to our lives, but we also have to be capable of giving more life to the years. And this is a challenge that becomes even more significant if, as the OCD does, if we were to use the life expectancy indicator at 65 that in Spain, according to the most recent data from 2015, was 21 years on average versus 19.5 of the OECD average. So the challenge that we're dealing with has to do with sustainability, with uh, 
having a sustainability for an active population that is aging, but where we have to implement preventive actions from the very beginning of uh, the moment when they work and throughout all of the stages of uh, workers' life cycle and not only in this final stage of their lives. This campaign has been uh, stimulated with a very significant debate that goes beyond uh, uh, occupational risks and which has focused on other issues that are connected to the issue of uh, corporate social responsibility, things like well-being or like work-life balance or the promotion of health at the workplace, among many other things. And this campaign corresponds to some of the priorities of the Spanish strategy that covers the period 2015 to 2020, and it is a strategy that uh, has received the full support of all the social stakeholders, and perhaps this is the most important characteristic of uh, this plan, and we have yet to see the results that we all expect are going to be positive. In other words, there are going to be improvements in working conditions and in the reduction of occupational accidents and occupational illnesses. But this also has to take us towards um, measures that avoid um, the early departure of people from their working lives and so that we can also protect other vulnerable collectives. And in this Spanish strategy, there are several lines of action covered that are geared towards specific collectives, among which we have uh, young people and the older workers. Sometimes in the analysis we forget about young workers, and we are also dealing with a future challenge here. And it's not only being carried out by the national governments, but also by the uh, international labor organization. And uh, these new forms of employment, these new forms of work, which without a doubt also pose challenges from the point of view of occupational safety and health. And of course, uh, we have to focus a lot on the older workers. And all, in spite of the experience that we've accumulated, this uh, collective can be much more vulnerable in terms of certain risks because of the physiological, physiological changes uh, over the years and because of the effect caused by illnesses. So we have to focus our preventive actions on the specific needs of a um, population that is aging and which presents a much and much uh, more diversity. So from this I think that in this analysis, and as regards all the stakeholders that are involved, we have to recognize that the major challenge for prevention and for society over the next few decades has to do with uh, the population's aging. So what we have to do is implement an aging policy that is completely active, that is based on a society that uh, reaches out to all kinds of ages, where age is not considered to be a problem, but rather an opportunity. And the Spanish government has adopted measures so that our um, job market can be more inclusive and more fair, so that age will not produce any discrimination as regards getting a job or keeping a job. So measures like adapting the retirement age or, for instance, uh, those steps that in 2013 brought about a uh, new regulation so that it can it be easier to work and receive a pension. So, in other words, eliminating the constraints we've had until now. So there has to be a compatibility between 50% of your pension and uh, any freelance work, whether it be a full day or half day. But this objective right now, and it's something that is being discussed by the Commission at the Toledo Pact that analyzes the reform of our public pension system and also by the social stakeholders, well, this compatibility should not only reach 50%, but rather 100% of your pension. So measures like the one that was adopted with the labor reform of 2012. So, in other words, collective agreements should not set uh, mandatory ages of retirement so that we can avoid discriminating workers over 50 years of age in collective dismissals. And I wouldn't want to finish without referring to other aspects that the government is also working on right now in uh, this uh, political mandate within the framework, within this current social framework. Measures like, for instance, the need to have reasonable working hours 
or healthy practices at companies. And this campaign is a magnificent example. And above all, what we have to help is to establish a work-life balance for all the workers in Spain, which is something that is being demanded more and more by the younger generations. And the ministry, as I said before, is working on this uh, on its social committee. And I would also like to take this opportunity to remind you that the government has recently updated its uh, main body in terms of occupational risks which is the National Institute, which is nowadays called the National Institute of Safety, Health and Well-Being at work, so that this can be adapted to the demands of a society that is much more demanding and much more aware of how important occupational safety is. And we are totally committed towards the actions that are being carried out in the European Union, as has been put out by the Commissioner with the social pillar as uh, was mentioned last week with the solemn proclamation by the heads of state and the uh, presidents of the main community institutions and not only the carcinogenics directive where Spain has been actively involved but also in the work-life balance issues and in the recent agreement that was passed by the displaced workers commission to avoid social dumping and I'm going to finish. I would like to thank you for your effort and for your commitment uh, in relation to the preventive actions of all the companies that have been involved in the European Award to Best Practices, and I would like to congratulate, above all, those that received the awards. And two years ago, at this forum, we confirmed the commitment of our government in relation to OSHA. So what we want to do is uh, achieve the common goal of improving working conditions and we also want to improve safety and health of all workers, a commitment that we support publicly here because we are convinced that the collaboration between the public authorities, employers and workers is one of the fundamental values that should serve as a guide for us to achieve uh, workplaces that are safe and healthy. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, our next speaker has just once again taught me a lesson about the beauty of different languages all over the world. Uh, without hesitation, when we asked her, when I asked her, what's the worst, worst thing about aging? She said something that I needed help with to translate. She said, Los Achaques. So Los Achaques would appear to be a collective noun that exists in Spanish for all of those little niggling things, that minor little health issues that can um, niggle you as you get older. On the other hand, she, like many others, welcomed the experience that aging uh, brings to us and the maturity, I suppose, that it confers upon us. So it's with great pleasure that I would invite Consejera Maria Jesus San Jose, Minister of Employment and Justice of the Basque Government, to the stage, please. <coughs> Thank you very much, Brenda. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Basque government, I would like to greet you and I would like to welcome you to the Basque country, in particular to Bilbao, and as we say here, Ongi Torriac, in other words, welcome. In English. But firstly, I would like to thank Krista for having invited me to participate in the opening session of this summit on healthy workplaces for 2017 that is organized every two years by the by OSHA and the European Commission and the presidency of the Council of the European Union that whose presidency is in the hands of Estonia. But the fact that the location of Oshem has made it possible for us to become even more involved in the Basque country 
we've become deeply involved with occupational safety and health of workers, and the director of the agency knows that our department at the Basque government is here to give its fullest support, especially through Osalan, to cooperate in whatever we have to do. And I would also like to congratulate you on having selected this subject matter for this issue that has become a very, very outstanding subject in recent years and will become even more relevant in the near future. In other words, the possibility of having healthy workplaces for all ages. And in fact, this was already mentioned in the strategic plan of 2014-2020 from the European Commission as the Basque Strategy for Employment 2020 or in the Basque Strategy on Occupational Safety and Health 2015-2020. So therefore, the strategic framework of the European Commission and based on the fact that the new economic and social and demographic and productive context demands new recipes, it says that there are three major challenges in terms of occupational safety and safety that have to do that has to do with the aging of the labor of the European Union. So in other words, aging has to be considered from this perspective, and therefore what we have to do is prevent or improve our prevention actions in order to deal with uh, the new and already existing risks like matter materials or degreed materials or biotechnologies. But as regards uh, community law, a special mention which should have to be made of um, Directive 2078, whose Article 1 establishes a general framework to fight against uh, discrimination based on religion or disabilities or age or sexual orientation in the field of employment and occupation so that the member states uh, can apply the principle of equality of treatment. And it does so because there are not only similar regulations throughout the European Union, but this uh, sets up equality conditions for all um, companies in the single market. So investing in a culture that allows us to improve conditions at work and places offers significant uh, economic and social benefits, like the reduction in the number of accidents that are related to work, and therefore this improves the well-being of the staff and produces a high level of worker satisfaction. And this directive, of course, is something that has been applied in the Spanish state where the law 31 of 1995 contemplates that workers should not be employed for those jobs where due to their personal characteristics, biological status or because of a disability, whether it be mental, physical or sensorial, if these jobs represent a situation of danger for them or if they are in situations that do not meet the psychophysical requirements of these individuals at the workplace. So employers must therefore take into account all of these aspects when the risks are assessed and therefore adopt the necessary preventive and protection actions. But it is true that, that there are multiple situations that would make it advisable to adapt to the working conditions. But it's equally true that age is one of the most relevant factors of this problematic area. But I would like to dwell upon this for a couple of minutes now, because as is covered by the Basque strategy on active aging 2015-2020, the Basque region should uh, address uh, the revolution of longevity that has become an international paradigm. Because nowadays in the Basque region, 20.2% of the population has already exceeded the threshold of 65 years of age and 31.5% of these people um, are aged 80 or over. So it is expected that by the year 2029 there will be something like 600,000 people that will at least be 65 years old. So therefore this will need to be one third of the total population or 29%. So this is why the Basque Strategy for Employment 2020 and this uh, has resulted from the consensus reached by the social interlocutors of the country and wants to establish the guidelines that should serve as a reference for future employment policies. One of its 
Six major, major, major axes has to do with improving the Basque employment system in such a manner that we can integrate any policies that have a direct in effect on employment in order to offer services that are much more geared towards the needs of people and companies. So we have to address the needs of an occupied population that is becoming more and more diverse, and we have to pay special attention to those groups that have specific requirements as regards of working conditions and as regards preventing occupational risks. Like like uh, uh, elderly workers or young people with a lack of experience, migrants and people with some kind of disability or some kind of persistent illness. But beyond this, which is what this uh, summit is all about, the well-being of people means that their lives have to take place at a healthy workplace and that a job should not cause any harm, but it should also be a source of satisfaction that has a positive effect for their health. And among other things, because working uh, with satisfaction and working under proper conditions means that uh, this produces a greater engagement of people. They become interested in continuous improvement and therefore become much more competitive. So this is the this is what was established in 1996 by the European Network for the Promotion of Occupational Health, which means that the promotion of health at the workplace requires the efforts of the employers, trade unions and workers and society so that we can improve the health and well-being of individuals at their workplaces. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope that you enjoy your stay in the Basque Country. Thank you very much. Well, uh, now we move to the social partners and uh, uh, by no means a new friend to the uh, agency. I'd like to invite up on the stage Krista Meester, who is here representing Business Europe. Um, Chris has the reputation of being quite a philosopher. So when I asked him what the worst thing, uh, rather the best thing was about aging, he very quickly came out with one word, relativism. Um, obvious, isn't it? So yes, relativism, for Chris means that the older you get, the more distance you place between yourself and everything else that's going on in the world. And I guess you end up being that bit more mature and dealing with stressful situations. So our philosopher from Business Europe should come up here now on the stage. Thank you, Chris. And he also said that the worst thing about aging is uh, perhaps knowing that you want to stay, uh, that the body wants to do a lot of things and yet it lets you down sometimes. But I have to say, whenever Chris visits, visits us here in Bilbao, he really makes a brave effort. <laughs> Good afternoon to all of you on behalf of Business Europe. Buenas tardes, Arachalde On. This time I will be short and I will not make it complicated. That is better for you, for your health, whatever age you are. So first of all, I'm particularly pleased with the past campaign. It was not just a health and safety campaign, um, it was also with work at the center of it. And to build healthy workplaces, you have to focus on work. Second, if you want to achieve that goal, start with building a culture of trust and respect. Thirdly, it's about finding a sustainable, a dynamic balance between a worker as individual with his or her competencies, talents, values and aspirations, and the work situation, meaning the work content, the work conditions, the work environment, and the OSH situation and the work relations. And that's all inside a structure, a work organization. Four, focus on autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Allow people to craft their jobs on the basis of their strengths. Trust them, respect them. Mastery is about getting better, being able to improve your skills and develop talents. Talent management and skills development should be part of any business strategy for healthy workplaces. Purpose is about contribution and meaningfulness. 
from the perspective of the worker. Never say cleaning is a dirty job. Cleaning workers make an important contribution and can be proud of their work. If you think your work is not meaningful, move on. Be the architect of your own career. Five, there is no magic program. People are diverse and so must be your approach. Six, summary. Start from the work, not from OSH. Give room. Use trust, respect and leadership as catalyzers, as enhancers, as levers. Make sure there is a genuine dialogue with and between your workers. Focus on autonomy, mastery and purpose. Build an organization where people are able and willing to do their best work and you have the best cocktail to make healthy workplaces for all ages a reality. It's not how old you are, it's how, how you are old. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. You see, I told you he was a philosopher. So I'm very pleased to welcome for the first time today uh, our next representative, um, last but not least, our second social partner, um, Marianne Schapman, who is head of the Working Conditions Health and Safety Unit of the European Trade Union Institute, and representing here today, of course, as well, the European Trade Union Confederation. Uh, Marianne used a nice word when we talked about ageing earlier. She mentioned a word nobody else had mentioned. She mentioned wisdom. So we become wiser as we, as we get older. She also, uh, there, there was e immense consensus around the questions today, I have to say. She also mentioned the fact that sometimes she's not, or the body isn't as able to do things as it once might have been. But um, there is something about Marianne that inspires, I think, um, confidence and I'm pretty sure that there is um, um, many good years left in her and in our European social partners. So please come up and, and uh, say a few words from the European Trade Union Institute. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda, for your friendly and warm, welcoming words. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I can hardly see the back of the room from here, and uh, I must say I am delighted to be here today in Bilbao, and I'm even more delighted to be in front of an audience that is uh, in, a, in front of a room that is filled with people. And um, I do presume that this is not only because of the beautiful weather here, but also because you are committed to this subject. I try to be short. I was told to, um, to be allowed to uh, speak improvisingly. And um, I was told also that we should, uh, as uh, speakers uh, later on in this afternoon, communicate with you as an audience and I really look forward to that. I will improvise. There is a beautiful sentence I read somewhere in the, in the, in the documents I, uh, I read before going here. It's the basis. Both workers and employers, as well as, as governments, have interest in sustainable working conditions that uh, that uh, improve the health and safety of workers throughout their working lives. We have a shared interest. Why then is it so difficult to obtain this goal? I want to, um, uh, on behalf of the ETUC, I want to uh, say that the ETUC is warm -heartedly supporting, has warm-heartedly supported this campaign. <coughs> and welcomes, of course, the, uh, the European uh, Social Pillar and is partner in the Framework Agreement on Active Aging. 
So far, my official statement. Now, that's what I want to say. And this is, I have, um, I have, I think, a message in three, maybe four. Um, there is, um, first and foremost, the most important statement I want to make is all of these efforts we have been making in the past years about uh, this campaign have to be seen back at shop floor level. At the end of the day, the question always has to be, what do the workers have as a profit from our work? And then my second message is, practice what you preach. And I found other statements in some document. I think it was the agreement uh, we made. And I want to ask you something. When did your organization adapt work organization in accordance with the needs of workers? When did it implement adaptable work organization over the life course? When did it improve task allocations? These are really beautiful aims. And this is it is actually at the heart of the matter. This is what has to be done. Um, and I think, um, I hope that later on this afternoon we will also be able to, to speak a little bit about practice. And I'm convinced we will, because we will hear also best practices and, uh, and of, at national level, I think. My third message, and I share this, I just noticed, with Chris, and I'm really happy that he mentioned it also. How is it possible to change working conditions, to adapt them to, to an aging workforce? How is it possible to create health and safety? How is it possible to have it on the agenda every day at, at shop floor level? There's only, there's, there's one very important condition that has to be fulfilled, and that is a secure working environment. And Chris mentioned it as trust and respect if I remember well. And I'm really happy to hear this from, an employee, from, from the employer's side, because this is the basis. And um, uh, I hope to be able to speak about this later on in, in, the, in the panel discussion also. What do we need to create a secure environment? And this is, not, this, this is, this is something also of um, um, contract forms, secure employity, no, uh, em employment, not only uh, flexibility, but also security. We all know that. To come to an end and to also mention just a bit about the aging um, uh, uh, subject, because as a colleague of mine said, this summit is actually about everything <laughs> concerning health and safety. Because if we want to create a sustainable workforce, it's quite simple. We just need to fulfill the requirements of health and safety. A secure working environment. I hope, and here's the wisdom coming in, that maybe when getting older and the workforce getting older, that the aging uh, agreements we make among, among young people and old people may contribute also to a respectful and safe and secure environment. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marianne. Well, now we're going to put the lights up a little bit, I think, because you've been sitting there all very bravely. And now we, before our next speaker, we are going to get you active and I'd like to ask you to take out your phones. I know normally in conferences, people are frantically telling you to put them away and stop looking at them, but we really want you to take out your phones right now. And we're going to ask you to connect to Slido. It's not an app, so you don't have to worry about downloading an app. 
just connect to the Wi-Fi, EU OSHA, password is EU OSHA Summit, and that is case sensitive. You need the capitals and the small letters. And go to your browser, connect to www.sly.do, or also in your packs that we gave you, there's a piece of paper uh, with that code that you can scan if you're up to that. But if not, it will ask you to enter a code. Do you have a meeting code? And to make it simple for you, we've used the same code as the hashtag for our Twitter account and for this event. So the code is hashtag EU OSHA Summit. That is not case sensitive. You don't have to put capitals or lower, you can do whatever you like there. So I'm wondering how you're getting on. Um, let's see. Do you think you could give me a wave when you're connected? Right. Oh, that's looking good. That's looking pretty good. Um, okay, I'm going to give you another minute or two. Uh, just go to the browser. I think the big, the big thing here is to, is to make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi. I mean you too, Carole. You may be the chair of our board, but you have to connect. You have to stay involved. And uh, the great thing is about this tool is that you've been listening now to all our distinguished guests. And this tool will enable you to do two things. It will enable you to ask a question, which will be particularly useful, I think, after our next speaker, the keynote speaker, and later on today when we come to our panel. And the other thing the tool allows you to do is it allows you to vote in some polls that we're planning on running today and tomorrow. So if you want to have your voice heard, you need to be connected to this uh, tool. So could you put your hands up again and show me how many people are connected now? Right, that is pretty good. Okay, thank you, thank you. So, before I introduce my next speaker, we're going to do a little test. Um, and um, for this, we're going to do a poll. So, when you're inside in the tool, you can see on the left-hand side it says questions, and on the right-hand side it says poll. So, we are now going to use a test question. And the test question is, if age is only a state of mind, which category best describes your state of mind right now? Now, I know age is not just a state of mind. And I'm not asking you for your age. I'm asking you about what's, what's your state of mind right now? Is it a cheeky child? a tormented teenager, a mad midlifer, or a groovy and glorious grandparent. And I'm going to give you 20 more. Did you see that poll come up on your screens? Yeah? So uh, voting is open, isn't it? Yeah, voting is open. So um, have you all voted? No, we haven't all voted. A few more seconds. Uh, so the voting is open. And as I say, you're not giving away, it's not individualized. Huh? We, we don't know whose phone it is from, but we do know where you live. Um, okay, so Iris, shall we close the voting? Let's close the voting. <laughs> right, okay. So it would appear to me that this is going to be a very interesting few days ahead because it would appear that the room is full of mad midlifers. Okay, quite a few tormented teenagers in there. Uh, I have to say a worrying number of them. Okay, great. 
So now you know how to use the tool, and we will be coming back to you on that. And also, while Professor Albin is speaking, and after she is speaking, uh, you will be able to ask a question. And later on, we will be able to see here on the computer what, uh, which questions have been asked, and we'll, we'll pick some of the most relevant ones, or depending also on how we're doing on time. Now, um, there is also another method of asking a question after Professor Albin has spoken. It's very antiquated, but you can also put up your hand.